morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is uh, Paco Panda and I uh, will be the, the moderator for this session, which is the interest group session, working session on species information. ITG 11 uh, of the that week, 2020 annual conference. We are in the week of the working sessions. With, with me is uh, Camila Plata from the, the National Biodiversity Information System of, of Colombia, acting as the moderator, and uh, William Ulate from uh, Museo Botanical Garden and CRBIO, acting as the technical support and also helping with everything that comes our way. Oops. Yeah. So for your information, this session is going to be recorded. So please behave uh, properly and be aware of the, of the conference code of conduct that you agree to follow when you register for this conference. During uh, this, this session, there will be several ways you can contribute to it. You can contribute through the, through the chat asking questions that uh, Camila will collect and forward to, to me and also well, to, the, to the full audience. If you want to speak, uh, you can raise your hand icon, which is at the bottom of the participant list in the Zoom uh, application. And for that, uh, you raise your hand, you wait until you are called, and then unmute your microphone and start talking. During the, the presentation, uh, the, the most um, uh, the part that I will deliver, you can interrupt me through the through the chat, and then we can uh, attend any urgent point that uh, might arise during the, the presentation. And, and then please keep the the longer questions and the more uh, yeah extended to the to the end of the session. We will have plenty of, of time to to discuss any item of your interest. In, in parallel, we have a, a shared document, and you can also. Uh, post uh, comments, questions, uh, suggestions, and bits of information relevant for this session. So, uh, first we'll start with the, with the presentation of the decision itself, which is uh, where are, are we here for. Then uh, uh, I will present the, the interest group and then the, the task groups inside of the, of the interest group. Then I will report on the on the current state of uh, affairs regarding uh, mostly the, the plan core, which is the, the main task uh, group, uh, the most active into in the interest group. And then uh, we'll go to the what we have been doing lately, which is mostly in connection with the, how to make a plan core compliant with the, the standard. Uh, uh, standard definition process. And, and then uh, we will see some examples of uh, how Plian Core is being used and some hopefully exciting developments around the Plian Core. And then for that, we will jump into the what we plan ahead. And then we have time to for you to make questions and suggestions and uh, to get in, engaged into the interest group and the, and the task group. So as I mentioned here, I will, I will report on the current status and activities of the speech information group. And, and then uh, what well, as I already mentioned, we will move into the, the current situation regarding plan core and the standard documentation specification. And we will see some examples of uh, plan core using uh, sparkle endpoints and uh, also some work on ontologies. Um, of course, an important component of this session is listening to you, so we can increase engagement and you identify some new uh, working areas to focus on and capturing requirements for, for new developments. Finally, as uh, is, it doesn't escape to 21, species information is, is central in the, the landscape of uh, biodiversity information. So there are, there are plenty of connections with other information components and also, of course, other Talwik standard 
standards and interest groups. So we have plenty of people in this session. I see 44 people connected. We will see that uh, the, the interest group and the associated uh, task group, Lean Core, has a long history. And as I mentioned, uh, special information is central and we, we will see plenty of connections with other components. So an, an important point regarding the, the focus of the, of the interest group is that by special information, we refer to all kinds of, of properties regarding uh, biological species, not only biological, pro bi bi biological properties, but also information related to uh, legal, legal information or conservation status or management information, as well as uh, information dem demography or related to other resources. So it's not, not just description, it's not just biological information. So, I mean, in, with that idea, it's, it's very important. It's a, a, a component, a, a, a facet of the discussion that we, we are not defining standards or terms for scientists, but also for other people to consume science great information. So, if uh, has been mentioned a, a number of times during this week, but uh, it is relevant here as well that interest groups in Calwick are kind of um, discussion fora on specific topics and the, the aim is about sharing information and making connections and not so much about uh, producing a, a standard or a, or a specification. That specific uh, works are, are produced inside the, the task groups. So there is a, a dependency between the, the interest groups and the task groups. So the, the task groups have to exist in, inside interest groups. In the species information interest group, there are currently two task groups. One uh, connected to invasive species. This is based on using work, the, the global invasive species information network. That was led by the, the U.S. Geological Survey by Annie Simpson. That it has not been very active lately. And the other task group is the, is the Pinyan Core. We will talk about it in a moment. So, Pinyan Core might be defined in, in its times as a set of uh, vocabulary terms that can be used to describe different aspects of biological species information including biological and non-biological. This uh, species level information is uh, a busy area in Talwick. So uh, a few years ago, we were requested to, to make a comparison and in fact, a point of uh, why we need something like a plea and core in the, the landscape of uh, Talwick standards. So in, uh, in 2018, we produced a well, we made a contribution in the, in the annual TALBI meeting and in, in which we, we examined the, the other standards that are close to, to Plian Core, such as the, the, um, the structure, uh, the, uh, the description uh, st standard and the, and the delta standard. And the conclusion of that uh, analysis is that these two standards is information for, you know, from taxonomies for taxonomies. So it's very specialized, very formal very qualified information, whereas Lean Core is more focused on visualization, publication, and post-taxonomy integration and interoperability of taxonomy information. So in other words, it is taxonomy information for the non-specialist. So in this, in this slide, we, we might see in, in, in another way how Lean Core relates to the Delta and the SDD standards. So um, as we can see here, uh, of course, Delta is all about code descriptions, in which something can be described as a, a number of states and with value, values for, for those states. STD goes a little bit uh, further by including terms to, to handle specimens and, and also distribution and, and hierarchy and natural language descriptions. And on, on, top of, on top of that, adding 
other kinds of information uh, in reference to these other the previous standards. European uh, Core has information about well, natural history and management and demography and threats and habitats and so on some more. As uh, usually happens in, in, the, in the world of the standards, there are uh, a number of terms that are taken from other standards. For instance, SDD is based in two other specifications. And Plian Core uses terms taken from Dublin Core, the ecological metadata language, the taxon concept schema, the Darwin Core, the specification of the encyclopedia of life, and the global invasive species information network. And here we see all the, the formal the files that define formally those, those terms. So a lot of uh, interconnections already. As you can imagine, and you are, are starting to realize, species pages is, is the primary use case for, for Pianco. And um, well, this uh, species pages is one of the most demanded products from the, the taxonomic world for the outside world. And everybody does uh, then. They are very similar, but they are also slightly different. And, and Plian Core was envisaged as, as a way to provide a, a unified underlying layer of compatibility for all those uh, endeavors. So it's worthwhile to mention here that Plian Core started as a, as a collaboration between India from Costa Rica and Spain in the year 2005-2006. And for that time, other partners have been deeply involved in its development and also in the adoption. The formal specification of uh, Plian Core is in an X, XSD file. We will see more of this in a moment. And because it's long history and partners involved, it has been implemented in a number of rather um, well used heavy cases. So here we have, you can have a high level view of, uh, of the Encore from the SD. So we'll see the the basic element is the data set, and, and for that, the, the unit is the taxon record, and then you have a number of high-level branches to take care of the different uh, content domains. The, the, the Plian Core ASTAT model is, is, the, is the master specification, and it's available on the corresponding section within the GitHub in the Tadwig space. The whole specification is uh, well documented in, an, in a number of uh, wiki pages also inside that data space. And here, bringing again the number of the, the standards of the, the data specifications that from which uh, Priancore make use. So uh, this is something that not always happens, but, but in the case of, of Plian, it is the case. Plian Core is the, is the specification on which a, a number of national checklists and, and catalogs are, are based. So here I'm bringing just, just four, which is I'm bringing the, the National Species List of, of Chile, the one from Mexico, the one from Colombia, and the one from Spain. And of course, because the, the people involved in the development of, of Plian Core and also associated with the development of the infrastructure for making these uh, national uh, lists, there is a, a, a considerable feedback between the implementations and the, and the developing of the standard. So we reach uh, 2020, and then we see that the documentation put uh, forward by in for, for Plian Core is, is not longer valid because we have the, the new standard documentation specification coming from that week. So we have to, to make a transformation of what we have into the to comply with the, with this SDS specification. So because uh, Plian Core is a, a mature specification and well documented, we say okay, this is 
a piece of cake. Thanks to the to the worldwide uh, Steve uh, Baskov and, and collaborators. There is a very detailed process and some scripts that help you in the process about how to produce the required documentation. But basically, from the outsider, it consists in filling an spreadsheet, getting a, a CSV file, and then let the, the scripts run. So it seems very straightforward, kind of a copy and paste a few hundred of times. So we got into this exercise. And, and for that, the, the core team that we have been working this, this year on this adaptation and making a uh, and core compliant with the new target specification. We have William Olate from Mobot and also CR Bio, Manuel Vargas, CR, CR Bio, Maria Mora CR Bio, Jose Juan CR Bio, Camila Plata from the, the National Biodiversity Information System in Colombia, and myself. So we thought, okay, easy piece, but not so, not quite. First, the, the specification uh, has a hard time dealing with uh, nested terms, with, with hierarchies of terms. And, and then uh, the handling of uh, borrowed terms has been kind of a, a headache, more of this in, in a moment. Well, for dealing with uh, the hierarchy of terms, uh, and a special column was included into the spreadsheet, so that is more or less was more or less covered. But for handling the borrower terms, well, we we had been uh, in contact with Steve Baskov along the, the process. Uh, I don't know if he's giving him headaches or he giving us headaches. But, I mean, working together after all. So this the uh, issue of the borrower terms can be uh, divided in, in a number of, of smaller issues. Well, first is the non-issue. The non-issue is when the use that are, the terms that are used within plea and core has its own II and it is within the domain of Darwin. That is the case of Darwin core terms. So that, those were the, the easy ones. But then we have terms of uh, Darwin standards that, that doesn't have, but that don't have IREs. For instance, the, the taxon concept schema. And then we have terms that are defined outside the that with uh, real, for, for instance, the, the ecological meta data language. Of course, we have uh, complex terms, simple terms. We have native, plain core native terms that are based in complex terms of other standards. So we are still dealing with that. Nevertheless, we, we got uh, a spreadsheet and produce a, a, a comma limited text on which the, the scripts prepared by, by, by Steve uh, Vasco run and, uh, and render a, a result. So basically, and we have mint f so far fake IRIs, but nevertheless, uh, we are thinking, we think we are close to, to finalize uh, at least this, this part of the process. But uh, of course, we have restricted ourselves to the native terms. Those are the terms that are mint within a uh, plain core. Um, still we have to, to find ways to, to deal with the borrowed terms and all the different cases that they encompass. So there is a, a lot of uh, navigating while building the boats. And, and in that, uh, Steve is, is, is being instrumental in helping to do that. And in some other respects, we, as Steve mentioned to us, we are ahead of the game. What is this and why he said that? Well, uh, in, in that regard, for instance, we have developed an ontology for the for, for client core. And, and then we have some functioning sparkling points. How was the process? Well, well, first I have to say it, ha it has been done in the in the within the scope of a of a project done by the Ministry of Environment of, of Spain. And what we did in in a nutshell is from the plan core specification, the XSD file. 
we implemented the, the schema in a relational database, and then we translate the schema into an, an, an ontology. With those two elements, we extracted the data and uh, put it into RDF uh, format. And, and basically, at, at the end, we have the data in a RDF store that can be accessed. And this is a, an, an example of uh, what you can do. This is the uh, visual, uh, visualization of the Sparkle endpoint, and in which, besides having the information coming from the from the official Spanish repository, we can also uh, see in, in parallel information coming from EUNIS, which is the, the biodiversity database, database of the European Environmental Agency, and also from UNIPOT, uh, a very uh, important uh, database of uh, protein uh, structures and sequences. So in some respects, we are in, in the world of the semantic web uh, already. And so it seems that it should be easier to, to go to the tagging way, but the borrower terms is giving us headaches, as I mentioned. Other, other developments around clean and core that are relevant, I think, we think, is the, the connection of the, of the clean and core with the Atlas of Living Australia architecture. That was some preliminary work done by the by the people of the uh, CR Bio uh, last year and still working on it. And also, this is especially relevant for for the European colleagues, uh, which are of course are familiar with with Inspire specification. Inspire is the the data specification coming from the European Union to regulate and to standardize everything that has a, a spatial component. And one of those components is species distribution. So we also developed a, a gateway within Plin and Core and, uh, and the species distribution component of the, of the spine specification. And with this, I'm, I'm getting close to the, to the end of the presentation. Immediate plans are, of course, finalizing the making Plin and Core compliant with the SDS specification and send it to the Tagwood Executive Committee for entering the, the adoption process. Then uh, we want also something that we have started but not completely finalized, which is uh, making the GBIF IPT talk Plin and Core. And, and for that, we have to develop and, uh, and agree on, on extensions supported by the by the GIF IPT, which is well, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, GBIF tools, is the Integrated Pollution Toolkit, which is the, the application that is used for anyone around the world to pull its data sets into the, the GIF network. Traits, traits is a component of species information, but it is also approached by different uh, groups within that week. Uh, we think that in, in within Plin and Core, it is something about developing vocabularies, but of course this can be tackled by task groups depending from other interest groups. But this can be handled easily within Plin and Core. Then uh, habitats and ecosystems. This is something that uh, which I, I learned recently that there is some uh, projects in. In, in Spain that are using the elements of PN core for, for describing and, and cataloging ecosystems. Yes, and they say it works nicely. I mean, many of the components and the structure of PN core can be used without changing anything to, to ecosystems. Yes, instead of species, you have ecosystem or habitats. And then of course, as I said at the beginning of the, of the presentation, we are here also to, to know from you, your and your current projects, your, your requirements, your um, in, uh, in, interest in, in, this, in this area. So how to participate? You can uh, uh, propose uh, new uh, task groups, but of course it has also a process of uh, reviewing and, and seeing how they, they fit within the, the current landscape of, of task groups and interest groups in Delwick. You can contribute to the next version of Plian Core. 
um, though we we try and I think we we more or less we are good on, on that to to make clean core stable of course new new issues arise and new details have to be added errors has to be corrected so there is plenty of work there uh, raising issues for that uh, the the way recommended is to use the the issues uh, tool of the of the GitHub, in which you can open an issue and then it can be attended or handled. And the other means we we might think of uh, using a distribution list and keeping ourselves in, in content. And I think uh, yes, this is my my last slide. So it is your turn. Uh, Thank you, Patrick. Camila. Can, yes. Okay, How is it going the, the have, chat? <laughs> we only have one question, so uh -huh. I will invite everyone to ask to participate. And uh, so Carlos Martinez asks, what are the similarities and differences between Plinian Core and the Tadwick uh, Encyclopedia of Life Species Profile Model? There is there is a lot of uh, in, in common. The the approach. In the, in the detail is, is different in, in the sense that uh, the psychopathy the of life specification is much more, um, I would say, federated, whereas the Plian Core place, places more emphasis in, in making consistent data sets. And the Plian Core also have some borrowed terms also from Encyclopedia. Of, of course, life. yes. So they are quite compatible. Uh, Paula Sarmoglio has a question. She yeah, thank you. Uh, so my, my question is, is from the Tadwick side. So is the Plinian Core an actual charter task group? Yes, it is. But then about participation, the, the task group is not currently listed in the Tadwick webpage under task okay. group. So it would be good to we have to work that because that's we the entry for that. most people. So that, thank you. Thank you. I don't see any more questions. Anything on the document or? No, today we have a shy, shy crowd. Okay. I, Ian asks, can you add the URL of the example with the wolf here, please? I will look for it. Oh, yes. Um, And did you say that this is an actual implementation of the semantic web? Okay. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes it is, yeah, there is a, a sparkling point behind this uh, the, uh, web page. And this is a, a visualization of the, of the ontology behind. Uh, so you can see all, all the, the connections and all the, the elements contained in, in the Nepean core as an ontology. Yeah, oh, thanks very much. That's um, quite amazing to see. I'd love to see what's actually going on behind that, the actual implementation behind that website and how it all works. Well, you can have, you have there the, the actual ID of the, of the ontology.
then you can, of course, um, dig in and. Marco, if I, if I may add something. Sure. There's a, actually, there's an interesting situation with this task group, and that is that there's already implementations there using what had been developed before um, out of a, out of a, a schema, um, an XML schema and, uh, and the uh, ontology. So what the, work is, what the group is working on is actually to move, to, to get that, what they call bag of terms for the standard to become a, a ratified standard from Tadwin. Um, so in a way, we, that's why we, uh, um, I know Steve said like, well, you're in a, a certain particular position because all the content that you have, you have already even proven uh, there's implementations about it. Um, what we need to do is kind of go and create the terms. Now that sounds very, as Pablo, uh, Paco mentioned, that sounds very easy, but the problem is that the way it's done right now the process from Tadwick doesn't go into defining um, serializations or, or creation of models out of the out of the standard, um, and it's on purpose. So the uh, the challenge that we've faced is well, there are some things that if we do it as that we have already that are not going to be reflected in that bag of terms, and that's what happens with the uh, standards. Some of those terms. Uh, require certain rules of how we, they're going to be used in order to implement things like uh, uh, the ones that we want to get to um, Sparkle Point or, or ontologies or whatever. That's why probably the uh, final um, standard would include um, uh, maybe not as a normative uh, documents for the standard, but as additional documents, the ontology and, and uh, as a way to show how to how we intend those but those terms to be used in, in this particular way. Um, uh, Carlos, who asked before about the Encyclopedia of Life, uh, he, he says that he asked about SPM because it is implemented in a scrap, a scratch pads as a taxon description content type. It will be important to make the Scratch Pads team aware of the development in Plinian Core. I, I, I can talk to Vincent and Smith about this. Yes. Point taken. For the, the participants, you can also uh, raise your hand and open your microphones. How, how, hello. How does it? How does it link to um, OBOE or taxon concept or EINPN um, tax rash LD? All these other ontologies talking about species. Um, can you repeat it, please? But uh, I didn't get the audio very well. Where are the links to? Does it link? Is there any links to other existing ontology like Taxon LD? Uh, no, there is, there is no other links. And the, this ontology is, I mean, it's closing itself. So all the other terms taken from other standards are replicated here. So you didn't do any same as at all? No. Okay, are you planning to do it or? Uh, well, we. This project finished a few months ago, and we are in the process of, uh, well, we have applied for another project to continue with this works. But yes, I mean, it's, it's the logical way to go forward. Okay. And the upper ontologies you're linking to? You're thinking about linking it to upper ones? Uh, well, I'm not the person with expertise to answer that, but uh, I will forward to the 
to the ones who, who has the knowledge to do that. I, I mean, it makes sense, but I, I don't know the, the ideas and um, which, which ones are, but yeah, it's, it's all about connecting mm. concepts. Paco, uh, can you tell us please a bit on how you have worked with invasive alien species or other species important for nature and conservation? Um, well, uh, we are actually in, uh, in a crossroad in that regard because, um, let's see, get this out of the way. Because uh, we based every, everything related to species, uh, spe to invasive species, is based on the work of the of the Gizin network, which is no longer active. Uh, we consider that they they did a, a very good job uh, for uh, structuring the information and describing the concepts. So, and in fact, they have a number of. Um, XSD files with, with that, those, uh, that information. But recently, that work somehow collides with uh, recent developments coming mostly from I, I, IUCN. So we are trying to make uh, crosswalks between the two specifications. We are uh, uh, well, actually, a couple of years ago, we were very close to, to publish that in, in conjunction with, uh, with Annie Simpson with, and people from the Conario, but we haven't finished it yet. So now we have a, a very, well, I consider it's a very good, very formal um, specification for dealing with uh, invasive species, but it's uh, one that is not longer maintained. And then we might decide to, to move into the IUCN specification in a, in a future version. And we know the, the crosswalks be, between the two of them. But yes, it's, it is a, a hot a topic for the species level information. We have another question. Is there a link to a robust definition of what an instance of taxon is in this context? Uh, for example, how it is defined, what properties are definitive, how to decide if when a new instance is needed, this when an existing instance is appropriate? Well, uh, Piancor has a, well, actually the a, a term to connect species concepts with species concepts, which is based in the work done by, by the Berlin Botanical Garden. So we can say that two concepts are equivalent or one is included in another and, and, and so on. And uh, in, in, uh, in Pliancor, uh, a taxon concept is defined by a name. The name has to have a an identification, if, if, if it is coming from the botanical world, it is an IPNI identifier. And a description, a description is uh, identified by, by a, uh, something uh, stable, I mean, uh, an article, uh, a monograph. And the hashtag, either we use the DOI of the article or we use the, we coin our identifiers. So a taxon is a name, with a description, each each of those elements with their respective identifiers. Maybe William, do you want to add something? Now, um, well, just that uh, one of the terms inherited from or borrowed from from TCS is a scientific name. So everything under scientific name is actually coming from TCS. And that's uh, one of the examples that Paco mentioned where we're gonna need TCS to define IRIs in order to, to, to move forward. Uh, um, we found a way, uh, Steve recommended as a way to, to, to actually move forward. But if, there, if, the, if TNC is gonna change any, any other structure of uh, TCS or make a new version of TCS, 
then we are going to have to uh, create a new version of uh, of the Plinian core, or or look into that to, in order to see how to make it compatible. Richard, you can open your microphone. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to dwell on this, but I just wanted to give a little bit of context of why I asked the question. So in the TNC group, we're, we're teasing apart the idea of a taxon name usage, what we call a TNU, which is pretty much exactly as you described it, uh, the use of a name within a particular documentation source or publication or something like that. And that's great. And that's going to be the core entity, as William alludes to, from the TNC TCS 2.0 effort. But there's also a conversation within that group about the notion of a taxon concept as a biological entity that transcends any particular taxon name usage instance. In other words, generating unique identifiers for these conceptual, sorry for the confusion term, the conceptual taxon concept, as opposed to the asserted taxon concept, which is anchored to a particular publication. And the reason I ask is that in that big cloud of, of you know, interactions, you're not going to get all of those, all of those related entities tied to one particular taxon name usage. What you're going to end up with is maybe dozens or more individual instances of a taxon name usage, which collectively represent a congruent taxon concept, and collectively they bring in all of those links to other entities. And I guess that's a subtlety that I didn't want to dwell on, but I just wanted to say that there's kind of a big issue underneath there and the TCS group will be thinking it through. But I think William answered it by saying that as long as the TCS group and this group stay in harmony, I think the answer will emerge you know, in a harmonious way. I hope that made at least some sense. Thanks, Richard. But then, Richard, you're implying that you're going to need, I mean, kind of uh, an identifier for those concepts? Well, that's what some of the TNC group are asking. And we've gotten to the point where we've decided that uh, this abstract notion of a taxon concept, which I think fits better into this model, is a different class of thing than a taxon name usage is, because a taxon name usage is very granular, very specific, very particular. And so there's talk of picking a taxon name usage to serve as the anchor point for a cluster of other TNUs that, that represent a congruent concept. That might be one approach. And then the other approach is generating a new defined class of thing that gets its own identifier, its own IRI sort of space. Um, but the hard part is figuring out how you know when you generate a new one of those things versus using an existing one. It's a very, I mean, we could spend hours debating it as we have in the TNC group. I guess I mostly wanted to raise awareness that it's a subtle but important and complex distinction that the TCS group is, is thinking about and may have implications for for this effort going forward. That, that's, I didn't want to you know, go down a rabbit hole and discuss it in too much detail, I just wanted to raise awareness that that's a, that's a topic of discussion that's that's actively underway in the TNC group. Yeah, but I mean, uh, in the context of that discussion, I am inclined to think that having the species concept instance, as you say, as you mentioned, connected will suffice or not. I mean, if, if you you say okay, this. Pinus pinea according to this, this monograph and this pinus pinea according to this other monograph is the same, is the same, is the same. Having just the cluster is not enough for handling the information. You need to put an identifier on that cluster. It's well, that's probably the leading way of, uh, of solving this, is essentially to have what we call a stack, or as you say, a cluster of these, what we would describe as congruent TNUs. That is taxon name usage instances that all point to the same circumscription. And, and there's, an, there's a model in TCS1, and it will be maintained in TCS2, having to do with maintaining that sort of thing. 
Um, but there is an argument that maybe that's it, maybe this taxon concept is more than that. It goes beyond just a cluster of TNUs, and that's the part that's sort of open to active discussion right now. It'll probably end up being sorry. I have puppies in the background. It'll it'll probably end up being is what you described. I'm going on mute. I didn't mean to stop the conversation with it. I was just <laughs> just sort of raising a little flag. I didn't want to stop the discussion. Right. Yeah, maybe another way to think about it um, is how uh, how do we how do we specify that TNUs are congruent? You know that these five TNUs that all use the same scientific name that they truly are congruent because they may or may not be. Right, and so TCS1 frames that as an assertion, a relationship assertion, which implies that you need another layer of according to, to say this TNU and this TNU both represent congruent concepts according to somebody else. Now, according to somebody, you know, another person, they might not. And so it's sort of in this fuzzy land of, of if those properties change over time, how does that potentially break all the links in this diagram. I mean, I don't know, Jeff, does that capture what you're trying to get at there? Um, sort of, yeah, I think it's good enough. Oh, questions, issues, concerns? I'm curious about um, where are you, what do you see as the next step around traits? Traits. Well, from the, just the, the conceptualization within Plinian is very simple, which is uh, using the, the fact of, or measure term, which is in turn taken from Darwin core to to record them, the, the, the problem resides with the vocabularies. And that, I don't know if it is in the realm of this interest group or, or in, in another. And, and then, I mean, vocabularies, the problem is that we have too many and we have, uh, we, we need to, to find some ways to, to unify and to make them, those compatible. And, and because they are created almost by project by project basis, it is, a horny issue. So for Plian core is not a problem. It's a problem for implementing and defining vocabularies. Thanks. Good. I have another question. Uh, do you know if traits have been discussed during the renovation of the ONIS database? Uh, I don't. But no. I, I was about to say that probably they will make their own, but no, just speculating. I don't know. Also, Paula advertises that tomorrow we will have more about vocabularies. There is some microphone making noise over there. Okay. What, what else? Um... Okay. Leonardo asks, uh, thinking that we have no many examples of the click implementation, uh, he says he doesn't know how much will be enough. What could be the next steps to move the click extensions from under development to release? Uh, do we have to ratify first Plinian in that week as a formal standard before uh, it is, is ratified in the IPP? 
Well, there, there are a number of uh, IPT extensions that are not ratified in any way by Tadu or anyone. So I wouldn't say that should be a problem, but I don't know if Tim Robertson is in the audience or not, or anyone from the VIP Secretariat. But the, the first step will be to, to get in touch with them to tackle this specific issue. Mm, I think Leonardo uh, has an inter interesting point because now GIV uh, has quite improved their uh, species page uh, and you can see all the, all the extensions and all the documentation in the extensions there. So that will be a great upgrade if we can just put uh, Pliny in there. Yeah, um, yeah, and from the point of view of the implementer of a, a national uh, species, well, more than a list, species pages uh, website, it would be great to be able to exchange information with, with others and the, the APT is the, an ideal tool. Many people are familiar with it, it's very easy to use, that would be a, a very, very nice addition to the Applian uh, core developments. Paula, go ahead, please. Yeah, just a, just a quick note from from the Tadwig uh, side here about ratifying stuff. From Tadwig, you can ratify just any vocabulary. Historically, extensions have not been ratified. However, there is very soon going to be one example of it with chronometric chronometric age extension. Uh, terms that is going to be ratified or it's going to be go through the process of ratification right um, and it's actually an extension so you could you could think of any vocabulary can be ratified as a standard yeah i mean so yeah the concept i mean of extension is rather uh on, on the use side of things and not on uh, on the standard side of things I, i'm not saying that they cannot be ratified i'm saying that so far historically they don't need to be ratified they haven't yeah. But yes, I mean, it, it is great because it is kind of an obscure area of how extensions got into the, the list of IPT extensions. So it's, I guess, it, it adds uh, transparency and credibility to the process. So that, that's great. Well, if there is no more, there are no more questions or, or issues, we can call the session to a close. We will keep you posted on future developments, and of course, we will celebrate when we get the Encore ratified by, by Tango. Thank you very much for participating, and the, the shared document will be available at least for one more day. So, you see if you can add second thoughts on any of the issues we haven't touched or we haven't touched but we should please uh, do that so thank you very much <laughs>